Can I just ask you how you got to your 14.4 billion contingency? Uh, it's a heck of a yes. contingency. Um, so on uh, phase one, you've got a point estimate of 15.6 and a contingency of 5.7. Now, I understand the arithmetic. Yep. I'm asking you for the justification for a contingency at this stage of the development. You're telling us you're absolutely, you're very certain now about phase one, take, uh, taking on board the point the control and order to general made about phase two, but on phase one, what on earth do you need this massive contingency? I'll tell you what this feels like to me. It feels a little bit like the Olympics with its 50% contingency. So you can come in and say, we did it in, but you, you'll spend over, way above the uh, estimate. And you'll just say, well, we stayed within budget because we've got this massive contingency. 14.4 billion pounds is one heck of a lot of uh, public money that is being set aside as a contingency in this project. Yeah. But what the, what the NAO report argues in favour of is having a range of costs, and what we've effectively got now is a range of costs. Why, well, why 14.4 billion? I understand the arithmetic, understand yeah. what's going where, but why so much? The the uh, what what we've said to HS2 Limited is that their uh, their target price for completing uh, phase one of the scheme is 17.16 billion. So that is the bottom end of our range of figures. Uh, what, what then happens to that point estimate? That, the point estimate there is 15.6, and we've given them a 10% contingency on that, taking it up to 17.16. Have you ever dealt with builders before? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Someone a low range to aim for, but knowing they've got a massive contingency, I would suggest would mean <laughs> that they will hit the top end of that contingency, right. if, no, if nothing else. I have to say that nothing I've seen in the report or that you've said today has dissipated my impression that here is a policy, a project plucked out of the air so as not to be humiliated by the French in the way President Mitterrand used to do about us having nothing but slow trains in this country. And the civil service and the HS2 are then sent out to find justifications for this policy. That uh, explains all the changes in costings, all the new factors being brought in, all the dredging round for, re for regional development, all the dredging round for 200,000 new jobs around every station uh, on the line. And it looks like you're trying to justify a policy which was plucked out in principle out of the air.